Other important features of indirectly controlled air piloted valves can be examined in this application, notably memory and priority. Let's examine memory first. You note the double air piloted 5x3 directional control valve does not have an offset spring nor a preferred deactivated state. The two air pilots work in opposition to one another. When the air pilot on the left is asserted, the valve shifts to a position that extends the cylinder. When an operator stops pressing push button on the left, the spool remains in this position and the cylinder remains extended. Whereas, when the air pilot on the right is asserted, the valve shifts to a position that retracts the cylinder. When an operator stops pressing push button 2 on the right, the spool remains in this position and the cylinder remains retraction. This begs the question, what happens when you turn the system off? In the absence of any new pilot signal, the system simply remains in the last asserted state because of memory. You'll again note the double air pilot valve does not have an offset spring because the two air pilots work in opposition to one another. This means when a particular air pilot is asserted, it shifts the spool into that position and the spool just stays there, even if that particular air pilot signal is lost. The only way to move the valve into the opposite state is to assert the other pilot. Memory is a desirable feature for several reasons, the principal one being safety. For example, if an operator pressed and released push button one to extend the cylinder to lift some heavy load, and then cut both pilot lines and tossed them on the floor to writhe around like a pair of snakes with their heads cut off, the cylinder would remain extended and the load remain lifted because the double air piloted valve remembers the last asserted state. Another feature of air piloted valves can be demonstrated with this application, that of priority. As I stated earlier, the only way to shift this double air piloted valve to the opposite position is to assert the opposite air pilot. This isn't entirely true because it neglects to mention that one must also exhaust the original air pilot to allow it to shift. As previously, consider the act of extending the pneumatic cylinder. When an operator presses push button 1 on the left, the air pilot shifts the valve into a position such that the cylinder extends. Rather than releasing the push button 1 as previously, the operator instead keeps mashing it down and the air pilot on the left hand side remains pressurized. Along comes operator 2 and mashes down push button 2 on the right hand side. It too sends an air pilot signal to the valve, however because the air pilot on the left hand side remains pressurized, the spool doesn't shift and the cylinder remains extended. After all, operator 1 got there first and operator 1's first action has priority over late arriving operator 2. Only when operator 1 releases push button 1 would it exhaust the air pilot on the left hand side. Now an operator can press push button 2 and send a valid air signal to the air pilot on the right. The air pilot shifts the valve into a position such that the cylinder retracts. Again, rather than releasing push button 2 as previously, operator 2 instead keeps mashing it down and the air pilot on the right hand side remains pressurized. Along comes operator 1 he's like, damn it, I told that cylinder extend and angularly mashes down push button 1 on the left hand side, which again sends an air pilot signal to the valve, however because the air pilot on the right hand side remains pressurized, the spool doesn't shift and the cylinder remains retracted. After all, taking advantage of operator 1's absence, operator 2 is now assumed priority. Only when operator 2 releases push button 2 could operator 1 extend the cylinder. Need eh? Priority ensures systems resolve conflicting inputs in a predictable fashion. All right, now that we've explored some of the advantages and applications and discussed memory and priority exhibited by air pilot valves, let's take a look at a simple pneumatically controlled or air piloted pneumatic system. And recall the previous double push button operated system necessitated the press of one button to extend the cylinder and another to retract it. This seems a little wasteful of an operator's time. Would it be nice to have an operator extend a cylinder at the press of a single button and then have it automatically retract at the limits of extension? One way of implementing this function is by using a double acting cylinder controlled by a double air piloted 5x3 directional control valve indirectly controlled by two normally closed 3x2 directional control valves. One push button operated as previously and this time the other one mechanically operated with a roller. At the limits of extension the roller is positioned so that the rod strikes the roller thus shifting the directional control valve on the right hand side. When an operator presses push button 1 on the left, the air pilot shifts the valve into a position such that the cylinder extends. While extending, the operator releases push button 1 and the air piloted valve remains in this position and the cylinder continues extending. At the limits of extension, the rod strikes the roller and shifts the roller operated valve 
on the right-hand side to a position that allows pressurized input to reach the air pilot on the right-hand side. At the limits of extension, the rod strikes the roller and shifts the roller-operated valve. This allows pressurized input to reach the air pilot on the right-hand side. Necessitating no input from the operator, the air pilot shifts the valve into a position such that the cylinder retracts. During the act of retraction, the rod stops striking the roller and the spring offset returns the roller valve to the deactivated closed state, thus exhausting the air pilot on the right-hand side and resetting the system for another single cycle reciprocation. Here's a real-world example of this system. When our operator presses the push button, the air piloted valve shifts and the cylinder extends. Upon striking the roller, it sends another air pilot to the opposite side, shifting the valve back and the cylinder retracts automatically. Alright, let's explore a couple scenarios using this air piloted system, keeping in mind memory and priority exhibited by air piloted valves. Scenario 1. An operator presses and releases push button 1. As previously, the air pilot on the left hand side shifts the valve into a position such that the cylinder extends. While extending and before striking the roller valve, the whole plant suddenly goes dark. Pressure in the pneumatic source drops to zero and all airflow stops, primary and pilot. What happens? Given there's no pressure, nor airflow, most likely the cylinder comes to stop midway between extension and retraction. While the system is in the dark, an operator actually gets up out of their chair and goes over to inspect the system, placing their eye immediately below the tip of the rod. You, the technician being asked to troubleshoot the sudden failure of the pneumatic source, quickly resolve the issue. But before you turn it back on, what are you going to say to the operator looking at the rod? And why are you going to say it? Here's what you're going to say. Put some safety glasses on, buddy, because this air pilot valve has memory and maintains the last asserted state. Given air pressure was lost while extending, the spool of the air piloted valve remains in the position allowing extension. Upon restoration of air, the cylinder continues extending, pressing the back of the operator's head against the roller valve, thus retracting the cylinder. Scenario 2. Priority. Sometimes you don't want extension followed by immediate retraction. Sometimes you want to extend and hold it for a bit before you retract. To allow this functionality, my advice would be to press and hold push button 1. Why is this true? This is true because the air piloted valve is exhibiting priority. When an operator presses push button one and holds it down, the air pilot on the left hand side remains pressurized. Even if the roller is struck and sends a pilot signal to the air pilot on the right hand side, the double air pilot valve remains in this position allowing extension because the air pilot on the left hand side was pressurized first, thus it receives priority, effectively ignoring the roller valve input. Only when an operator releases push button one Will the air pilot on the left hand side be exhausted, allowing air pilot on the right hand side to shift the spool to a position allowing retraction? Scenario 3. Troubleshooting. Now there is no limit to the crazy stuff that can and does happen in an industrial setting, but consider what happens if the roller actuator is a little sticky, either because of age or uncleanliness, and when actuated, remains triggered. What happens and why? Will the system work as intended and for how long? This is also a priority scenario. Most likely, you would observe the following. When our operator presses push button 1 on the left, the air pilot shifts the valve into a position such that the cylinder extends. At the limits of extension, the rod strikes the roller and shifts the roller operated valve into a position that it sends a signal to the air pilot on the right hand side, which shifts the air piloted valve into a position such that the cylinder retracts. During the act of retraction, the rod stops striking the roller. However, the sticky roller remains triggered and the roller valve remains in a position that continuously sends a signal to the air pilot on the right hand side, thus not resetting the system for another single cycle reciprocation. Outwardly, nothing is amiss because the system did perform a single cycle reciprocation as intended. However, when an operator attempts to repeat this action, it won't work. Why? Priority. That's why. With the air pilot on the right hand side remaining pressurized by the inadvertently actuated roller valve, the double air pilot valve remains in the retraction position because the air pilot on the right has priority over any new input. Only when a technician frees and cleans the sticky roller or replaces it with a new one will the system stop asserting retraction as priority and reliably perform single cycle reciprocation as intended. All right, hopefully this quick discussion and demonstration of air pilot directional control valves got you thinking. We'll explore more applications of air pilot valves after we discuss two important logic valves, the AND or dual pressure valve and the OR or shuttle valve in later lectures. In conclusion, this lecture examined air piloted pneumatic directional control valves. We discussed the advantages of air piloted valves and explored several air piloted applications. 
Additionally, we introduced the concept of memory and priority exhibited by air-piloted pneumatic directional control valves. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates. Thank you.